Jake has arrived at Medina Hair Transplant Center in Orange County, California, for his first hair transplant surgery. After careful research, Jake has chosen Dr. Amir Yazdan and Medina Hair Transplant Center to perform his surgery. My name is uh, Jake Sanders. I'm down here in Orange County at Medina Hair Center with Dr. Yazdan. Um, I've been use- losing my hair since I was about uh, early 20s and it's really bothered me so it's time to make a change. Uh, I'm going to have Dr. Yazdan uh, do a, probably a strip procedure and uh, insert maybe 2,500 to 3,000 grafts in my receding hairline. So see how it goes. I'm excited. Jake is in the office of Dr. Amir Yazdan, who carefully studies the condition of his follicles, the density of his hair, and the viability. It is necessary to plan the transplant in detail to ensure the best possible results. The patient can see all his information on the computer's monitor. The patient's donor zone looks perfect. It will take approximately 2,500 grafts to fill this area, to lower the hairline and to fill the frontal and top areas. It has been decided to use the strip method, which will leave the patient with only a thin cosmetic seam. It is not necessary to cut the hairs before hair transplant surgery using the strip method. It is only necessary to shave the region of the donor area. Once the strip is harvested, there will be no evidence that the area has been shaved. The surgeon carefully constructs a natural looking hairline. After the patient agrees to the hairline, the procedure begins. The first step is anesthesia. At Medina, under the direction of MD Amir Yazdan, they have developed a unique process for anesthesia. The patient feels no pain during the course of the surgery or after it. The area is also not subject to swelling, as is typical with hair transplant procedures. On the day after the surgery, when we see our patient for follow-up, it is impossible to tell the day before he had undergone hair transplant surgery. It is necessary to precisely define the width of the sample, which in one hand will give the necessary quantity of grafts, and on the other will not cause tension in the scalp as the seam heals. The next stage, the excision of the rag. The surgeon has to carefully cut out a hem so that the donor zone shows as little sign as possible from the surgical intervention. The surgeon's techniques prevent the seam from turning out too wide, which can lead to unacceptable scarring. Now we see the seam being closed. The stitches are made using degradable thread, allowing the cut to heal without need for the surgeon to remove the stitches after the procedure. Pay attention. Once the seam is closed, it already looks quite presentable. The thin strip shows little sign of bleeding and doesn't protrude from the skin's surface. While Jake takes a break, the rest of the team works to process the grafts. It is an extremely laborious task requiring attention to detail and the use of precision tools. Jake watches the preparation of the grafts with curiosity. It's not only the quality of the graft extraction that is essential for a successful hair transplant, but also the quality of their processing. The longer a hair remains out of a human body, the greater the stress it experiences and the greater the probability that a graft will not settle. At Medina, to ensure the grafts are processed quickly and professionally, between three to five assistants work on graft processing for each surgery. This is a substantially large number of support staff compared to the majority of other clinics. This enables large procedures to be carried out in a very short space of time, guaranteeing an almost 100% graft survival rate. Just got the the strip cut out, um, virtually painless. I I fell asleep during the thing. I mean, I didn't feel any pain at all. Um, 
now they're, they're cutting the grass right now. Just getting ready to eat some lunch here in a minute and uh, they'll implant them and things are going great. In the meantime, the surgeon starts to prepare apertures for the grafts in the recipient zone. At this stage, it is also very important for the surgeon to take into account the direction of hair growth. At Medina, we use the latest precision tools which enable the transplant of grafts in the minimum possible time, and the preservation of the direction of hair growths set by the surgeon during the creation of apertures. Furthermore, the small diameter of the apertures ensure the natural density of hair in the transplant zone. The hairline, the direction of hair growth and the hair density are all carefully calibrated to ensure an authentic, natural look. Dr. Nelson, thank you for your secret science. It doesn't hurt at all. I don't feel anything. Each aperture is counted by a special device. It displays the figures on the monitor, enabling the surgeon to check on the accuracy of the apertures in real time. The final stage, implantation of the grafts. Yeah, I'm just getting them implanted. The hair is now it's painless too. This whole procedure has been pretty much painless. Doesn't, uh, doesn't hurt at all. Super excited to see the results after this. It's gonna, I think it's gonna look great. It is well worth noting that in the course of the procedure lasting many hours, there is virtually no blood. Four to five persons work to transplant grafts, as it is of the utmost importance to keep the operating time to a minimum. On the second day following surgery, Jake returns to the clinic without any signs of hypostasis, a common symptom of hair transplant patients. Our success in substantially reducing the risk of hypostasis marks Medina out from the majority of clinics across the world. Our personnel wash his head, the doctor gives some final recommendations, and he says his goodbyes to the team.